to worship can clear the runway tonight. Oh, yes, 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 yes. So let's just take a couple of minutes to empty out ourselves right now. To begin to worship him. Because I might be foolish enough to believe huh, that God's cloud can even drop in his place. Huh. Oh, his bow can drop in his place. Huh, that we won't be able to move. Hallelujah. So let's just lift up holy hands and continue to worship. Because he's worthy. Hallelujah. To be praised. He's worthy to be praised. Come on. Have your way. Tell the Lord to have your way. Come on. Have my say. Have your way. Come on. Have your way. That's what we want, Holy Ghost. Have your way. Yes, Lord. Till we're not the same again. Have your way. Come on, tell them to have your way in 
your marriage. Tell them to have your way in this ministry. Tell them to have your way in your prayer life. Oh, yes, Lord. We worship you tonight, Lord. That's what we want to do, Lord God. We want you to have your way in this place. Because I found out that when he has his way, you can't predict the move of God. You just have to move with him. And next minute people are being delivered. Next minute people are being delivered. Next minute people are being healed. Yes, Lord. So spirit move. That's what we want. Spirit move. and guiding us to all truth. We thank you for revealing the Father. 
we thank you Lord God for opening up our eyes that we may behold wondrous things from your word we thank you Lord for healing the sick raising the dead uh, cleansing the lepers we thank you Lord for having your way in this place oh yes Lord oh yes Lord so Lord God I surrender myself unto you you have preeminence in this place Lord God in the mighty name of Jesus Christ we thank you Lord God and we bless you in Jesus mighty name you may say amen 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 hallelujah yes Lord mm. is it just me but I, I believe God is in this place huh? listen you have permission to move huh? you have permission to even run if you want to I believe there's some resistance going on huh? but if we just take 30 more seconds huh, to really let it out and give them everything that you got huh, to pour out and to back them to give them everything give them everything give them everything 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 you've been Let's get into it. 
into the word. It is just a blessing to be invited here. I want you to know, Pastor John Doss, I'm privileged and honored to be here before you to help just even fellowship and help celebrate with you. Amen. I give you honor, Pastor John and Rosalind Doss. Amen. We just thank God for you. For all the ministers, all the prophets, and all the pastors, and all the elders, and all the servants, and everyone who's just called by Jesus Christ's name, I, I thank you for just coming here. You could have been somewhere else. You could have been just doing anywhere. You could have been at another church, but you decided that there was an assignment here on, I believe, 6612 Betty Ford Road. 21, there we go, backwards. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. I just want to give honor to my wife here, Kataya Griffith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank God for you all. I have my sisters here. My sister Tanisha. I have all the sisters for God Cannot Lie Ministries. Where we are believing God. Hallelujah. And I got a good brother of mine. He come all the way from D.C. He said, I want to come down here. Brother Fletcher, hallelujah. I thank you for coming out here. Hallelujah. I thank you, Pastor Tim, the Don. Such a combination. And your sons, my God. I tell you, can I just be related to y'all? Can I just get some of that? Amen. My God. The brother came out playing the keyboard. Amen. My God. Hallelujah. But we just thank God and we just bless to have you here to be a blessing to us and also you you warmed it up uh, last night amen for the ascension amen how many of y'all was here at the ascension amen amen praise God we really ascended unto his holy hill amen well let's just get into the subject of the matter I have an assignment for you tonight and I believe God has a word for this church and the name of this word is it's time to come out of the closet. It's time to come out of the closet. Now, let me give a disclaimer. This is not an LGBTQ uh, affirmative message right here. So we're going to bind that devil up right there. But it's time to come out of the closet. Hallelujah. Father God, we just thank you for your word, Lord God. May you speak to us and through us, Lord God. I pray that every heart, Lord God, will be transformed. I pray that every heart will be pricked. I pray that it will be conviction, Lord God. I pray that you will take us to another level. I pray, Lord God, that we'll never, ever be the same again. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Say it with me one more time. It's time to come out of the closet. My assignment starts off in Matthew chapter 6, verse 5. And while you're getting there, let me just talk a little bit to you real quick. Matthew chapter 6, verse 5 is our assignment. Many a times there are closets that God talks about, and closets can be figuratively. When I mean closets, I do not mean just the closet where you have your clothes and your dresses and your pants and your suits there. I, I, when I talk about closets, uh, God wants us to be alone with him. Amen, somebody. God wants us to be in a secret place with him where nobody else uh, can hear you. You know, every now and then, us pastors, uh, you got to take the robe off and you can't be a, a, a chief apostle. You can't be chief prophetess this. Uh, you got to come as a son and a daughter in a private place. Amen. There's some prayers that you you cannot pray publicly. You have to pray privately because if everyone knew what you were struggling with, my God, they would not accept your, your assignment. They would not accept your anointing because if they saw you weeping and crying like a little baby about some of the smallest matters. Oh, my God. Ah, ah my God. So God creates a place uh, called a secret place, a place called his closet. Let's just read real quick. Matthew chapter 6, verse uh, 5. It says, and when you pray, it's I'm reading from the King James Version. Uh, uh, you shall not be as the hypocrites are. For they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets. That they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. Uh, verse 6 says, but you, when you pray, enter 
into your closet. And when you have shut the door, pray to thy father which see in secret, which is in secret, excuse me. And your father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. My God, may the Lord add a blessing to the reading of the word. Right? You get, find me in the secret place. Huh? When you get into the closet, shut the door. Someone say, shut the door. Huh? Uh, my assignment is to let you know that it is time to come out of the closet. But the first semester of this season for your new uh, church anniversary is to get in the closet. Amen, somebody. Huh? Oh, I know that it's time to come out of the closet. But before you come out of the closet, huh, you got to go back in the closet. Huh? Oh, I know what it is not to be inside of the closet. I know what it is uh, to fake it until you make it. I know what it is to operate off of giftings uh, instead of his presence right there. My God. Uh, but God wooed me back into the closet. Uh, he wooed me back into the secret place uh, where God downloads certain things inside of you. Uh, let me just tell you what the closet is. Uh, when you get a root word of the word closet, uh, it means to be close. Ah, uh, uh, it is a place uh, where God wants you to get close with him. I know we get close with people, but God wants us to really get close with him. He says in the book of James, draw nigh unto me and I shall draw nigh unto you. We have to get close unto God. We've been getting close unto each other. We've been getting close upon our phone. But how many of you have spent time before his face getting close in the secret place? Someone say in the closet. My God, Revelation lets us know huh, we have to go back into our first love. Huh. Let me take you down memory lane. You know when it was your first love. I'm talking to people online too. Huh. Uh, before it was uh, online right there, you got on the front line. Huh. You got on the front line. No one had to woo you or pump or prime you. No one had to text you to come to church. Huh. My God, you were the first one as the doors opened. Huh. When was the last time you read the scriptures huh, and tears cascaded out of your eyes? Huh. When was the last Last time you spent even an hour in prayer seeking his face huh, and feeling someone touch you on the shoulder and no one's not there but angels huh, are surrounded around you. When was the last time huh, you begin to pray and the glory begin to drop? When was the last time huh, when someone did something to you, you quickly forgave them? When was the last time you blessed those who curse you, pray for those who despitefully use you? But sometimes we hold things in huh, because we have not gone in the closet. Sometimes we stay offended because we have not gone in the closet. And we can be up here dancing and twirling before the Lord and talking in tongues. And when you mention somebody, oh, no, our face start contorting. Why? Because we haven't been in the closet. In the closet is a secret place huh, where God starts dealing with you. In the closet is a secret place. Huh, not only where the anointing falls, huh, where God does surgery. You know when they do surgery. Huh? Oh, my wife's a nurse practitioner. You know when they do surgery. Huh? They don't just open it up for everyone to see because huh, when there's surgery being done, it looks messy. Huh? When there's surgery being done, they're taking things out. Huh? Oh my God, most people will pass out huh, if they seen what's going on in the operating room. Huh? So God be begins to do surgery. Huh? You know how God did surgery in the beginning of Genesis. Oh my God. Huh? Oh when Adam, huh, he didn't know. Adam didn't know he needed to help me. Huh? But God put him to sleep and did huh, some surgery and opened up huh, a side and brought out a rib and brought the woman to him. My God is a surgeon. That's why they call him the chief physician. And show our God, huh? he comes in in the closet. Huh? He starts to work on the heart. He starts to prick the heart. Huh? You know how it is when you come to God mad. Huh? Oh, come on now. Huh? Some of you, you came to God mad in the closet. Huh? You were talking about that sister talking about you. Huh? Everybody talking about me on job. Why are they passing over people? Huh? Oh, why are they talking bad about me? Huh? And when you pray, this is when you really know you touch God. Huh? Oh, you came there complaining. Huh? But then you came there interceding. Huh? Oh, you was complaining about the the situation huh? and then you started praying and weeping even for your enemies huh? that's when you met God in the secret place huh? oh I come to tell somebody huh, that the church of revive huh, we have to go back into the secret place huh? I know we've been in a public place huh? I know we've been quarantined for a whole year huh? but it's time to get back in the secret place huh? you see the dangerous thing what happened last year huh? you would think people would come out on fire you would think people come out raising the dead huh? you would think people coming out and smoke is coming out huh? but they came out lazy huh? they came out feeling like huh, I need to leave huh? that ain't my song they're playing I'm out of this place huh? because they were quarantined but it wasn't in the secret place there is a secret place 
where God wants us to be. There is a secret place uh, where God does the surgery. There is the secret place. Uh, oh my God, the closet, when you look that word up, uh, it means hidden chambers right there where they store certain goods. Uh, it is a place uh, where God downloads. It is a place uh, where God equips. It is a place uh, where God gives provision. It is a place uh, where God gives correction. It is a place uh, where God gives deliverance. Oh, shatalabai. It's time to go in the closet. Uh, and this work that God is going to do for Revive and, and all surrounding churches is what he's going to do will not always be televised. What he's going to do in you, he's got to pull some things out of you. Uh, oh, because if I be honest, my God, a lot of us, uh, we have taken on other concepts uh, that God has not given the glory off of. Uh, we have brought on vain traditions uh, that God never said do it in the first place. Uh, we have bring on little gimmicks uh, instead of his glory. Uh, and I come to tell somebody uh, that the name of Ichabob uh, has got to be removed from our churches. Uh, the name of... Shame on the church uh, if you're afraid to go to church uh, because you're going to catch something. What happens when you come to anointed church uh, is not that what James said. If there's any sick among you, bring them. I come from a bloodline, uh, my God, uh, where we studied about, uh, my God, when there was revivals, uh, there was a man named John G. Lake, uh, that when he went into a place uh, that they had the bubonic plague, uh, and people were dying right there, uh, he was there, uh, and they wondered why he couldn't catch nothing, he said the anointing kills the disease, uh, they put diseases in his hands, uh, and it began to dissolve and die right there, my God, someone say bring back the glory, it comes in the secret place we're in a place with technology and I love technology but uh, we have desired uh, to replace the glory for technology we have desired to substitute the glory for technology uh, technology is a great thing but my God uh, that's why I tell people it's a different thing uh, when you're in the presence of the Lord uh, it is a different thing uh, when we are together uh, I love Facebook uh, uh, Facebook live uh, that's great uh, for people who are invalid uh, for people who can't really reach out uh, but my God uh, if you get into the place uh, it is a difference. Huh? The anointing huh? when he's in the midst, huh? he will break forth yokes. Huh? The anointing huh? when he's in the midst, huh? he will transform. The anointing huh? when he's in the midst, signs and wonders will begin to happen. Huh? Some would say the secret place. Huh? And so the scripture lets us know that he goes, he tells you to go into the secret place. And the father sees you in secret. And as he goes to the secret place, he says he will reward. Someone say reward. He said you will reward openly right there. Let me tell you something. Most people, if you watch game shows, they love rewards. People jump up and down for rewards. But let me, got, now let me give you news. Uh, oh, there's something about when God rewards you. Uh, he is the gift that keeps on giving right there. My God, uh, when God rewards you, he told Abraham, he said, listen, I don't have to give you cattle. I don't have to give you silver and gold. I am your exceeding reward. And get this, he's a rewarder of those who my God, if God is your reward, will you have lack inside your life? If God is your reward, why would you be worrying about a disease? If God is your reward, I'm not, I'm not talking about no doctor, I'm not talking about no Pentecostal, I'm talking about God, God Almighty who stretched forth the heavens, God Almighty who created heaven and earth, God Almighty who caused the wind and waves to cease by his word. Uh, my God, if the winds believe, uh, believe him, my God, uh, why can't we? Amen. Someone say the secret place. We got to go back into the closet uh, in the secret place uh, where you say, Lord, help me with my unbelief. Uh, I believe you in this area. Uh, yes, I believe you in healing, but this situation, uh, I don't know how you're going to get me out. You know, sometimes you got to be very honest with the Lord. Have you ever been very honest with the Lord? Uh, I know you faked it and made it. I know you blabbed it and grabbed it. Uh, but if you just got real with the Lord, you say, Lord, uh, this mountain is very moved. I tried to speak against it. I tried to fast against it. I called on the prayer line and they 
pray for it, uh, but somehow this thing won't move. Somehow that child won't change. It seems like every time we pray, the child gets worse. Uh, my God, have you ever been in a situation uh, where the situation got worse uh, instead of better inside of your life? Uh, oh my God, but you got to continue to seek God uh, in the secret place uh, because that's where he will reward you. My God, weeping may endure for the night, uh, but joy will come uh, in the morning right there. You got to hold on uh, and trust uh, in his everlasting word. Someone say the secret place. Uh. Uh, Jacob uh, was in a secret place. Uh, Jacob was a man who had two wives. Jacob was a man who had 12 sons. Jacob was a man who had also a daughter. Jacob uh, he had all these children. He had wealth. Uh, he had servants. Uh, but he got into a place called Jabbok. Uh, he got into a place, the ford of Jabbok uh, where he had to be alone with God. Uh, and that's where he got into a secret place uh, where my God uh, when no one could see it, where Rachel and Leah couldn't leak open and look what's going on. Uh, you know you gotta get to a place Place, huh, when nobody sees you you got to get to a place huh, where you can get alone with God and he began to wrestle huh, my God that his identity be changed he began to wrestle huh, that he be blessed huh. but how many of you know God knows more what we need even before we ask it huh. oh my God huh, he began to wrestle for a blessing huh. but the angel of the Lord said before I bless you huh, I got to change your name huh. and some of us huh, my God for this church huh, we got to change our name huh. we got to change our identity huh. we can't be you uh, we can't be looked at uh, as carnal. Uh, my God, some people of the world uh, are still looking at the church uh, like it's non-essential. Some people in the world uh, are looking at the church uh, that we're not the city on the hill that cannot be hid. Some people are looking at the church uh, like there are problems right there. But how many of you know uh, that my God, when the ecclesia uh, rises up, uh, there is a change. When the ecclesia uh, rises up, uh, my God, healing takes place. Uh, deliverance takes place. Uh, I remember at the brown spirit revival huh? the sheriff of the town huh? had to come there huh? because he said his prison cells huh? they were they were empty huh? the same drunkards huh? the strange drug addicts huh? the same brawlers huh? they were not showing up huh? as they always do huh? but something happened huh? he went to that place huh? to see what was going on huh? and he seen those same heroin addicts huh? he seen those same drunkards huh? my God serving in the church huh? my God when God does a work huh? the world will wonder huh? when God does a work huh? They will come to inquire and see what is going on in that place. Huh? But it first starts off in the secret place. I know through technology we have speeded it up. Uh, when's the last time you wrote a, a letter to somebody? My God, uh, I know that there is technology that things move very fast and it is very great how we communicate now uh, that I can speak to somebody in Africa and they can speak to me right away. Uh, we don't have to wait and send a telegram. Uh, we don't have to take a long time, uh, but we can text, we can chat, we can do great things real quickly. Uh, my God, I thank God for the technology, uh, but there is something uh, when we come with the mindset with God, uh, that we want him to rush the process. Huh? I know he makes haste to perform his word. Huh? But there are some things that are going to take time. Huh? There are some things that you got to learn. Huh? I know the old folks had some things wrong. Huh? But one thing that they had right. Huh? They knew about the altar. They knew how to get on the altar. They knew how to cry out for Jesus. Huh? They knew how to cry until you got it. Huh? They knew how to pray through. Some of us, we spend five minutes and then we go to sleep. Huh? You give a couple of ta from your tongues huh? and you fall into bed right there. But I need some people huh? that to spend more time before the Lord. Huh? It's a time huh? that when you start praying, huh? after you go back in the closet, huh? sometimes it seems rough. Huh? Sometimes it seems like everything is on your mind. Huh? Sometimes you wonder, oh my God, I got to put the clothes in the dryer. Oh my God, I got to take the kids. I got to do this. I got to do that. Huh? Come on, don't tell me I'm the only one right there. It is a lot of turbulence huh? going on in your mind. There's a lot of distractions huh, going on in your mind. But if you just push through. Oh, shatalaba. When you push through, I'm talking to prayer warriors. There is a time when you push through that your mind just gets clear. There is a time where peace starts passing you. And you like, my God, 
I don't want to. There is a time where you can't stand. You begin to stumble because his glory has entered into the place. There is a time huh, where you don't want to leave. Where even you like, listen, I got to go to work in the morning. But my God, just another hour, just another hour, just another hour. My God, there is a time huh, that the more you yield unto the Lord, huh, he pours in. He does more. Huh. You are being intimate with the Lord. Huh. He's saying, don't rush this thing. Huh. I'm trying to develop. Huh. I'm trying to birth some things inside of you. My God, great things. Things happen huh? in the prayer room. Great things happen huh? in the closet. Birthings huh? happen huh? in the closet. Huh? A lot of people, huh? I don't mind impartations, huh? but impartations huh? are really just activations. Huh? What you've been doing in the secret, huh? God will stir it up. Huh? My God, that's why Paul, huh? he says, stir up the gift that is inside of you huh? by the laying on of my hands. Huh? But it's something you got to do. Huh? You got to stir it up. Huh? You got to get into the secret place huh? and stir it up. Huh? You got to anoint your hands before the Lord huh? and say Lord use these hands huh? don't be shy or timid with it huh? be bold as a lion huh? and say Lord huh? I don't want to leave this earth huh? without leaving getting someone saved huh? I don't want to leave this earth huh? without doing great exploits huh? I don't want to leave this earth huh? without being a witness for you huh? I don't want to leave this earth huh? without my life being transformed huh? I don't want to leave this earth huh? without pulling someone out of a wheelchair someone say secret place So when we go into the closet, you got to be careful about things that will try to pull you out of the closet too soon. You got to be careful about distractions. You got to be careful about shame. Because there's nothing like sinning and then trying to get it before God, my God. So, oh my God, the devil's hounding you right there. You got to be careful about what will pull you out of the closet. You see, Jesus understood. Everyone is followers of Christ. And Jesus understood about going into the secret place. He's the one who said this. When you go into the secret place, many of times, I want you to hear this, Pastor. Many of times they tried to make Jesus king. And instead of him saying, thank you, put the crown on my head right here. You know, just carry me. You know I am the king of kings, Lord of lords. He withdrew himself. And he went to a place of prayer. I want you to hear this. You got to be careful where people are trying to take you. Because people will try to pull you out. That's why the apostles in Acts chapter 5, they said, listen, they said, listen, I know this is good that the widows are, they're, they're quarreling. I know we got a good food pantry going on in the church. But listen, we can't, we can't serve the widow tables right there. And what he said was, we got to give ourselves continually unto prayer and ministering of the world. You got to be careful because it's not just sinful things. Let me talk to some mothers right here. My God, oh, sometimes, oh, a mother, oh, a mother and father, they love their kids so much, but, but, but the kids would take you to soccer practice. The kids would take you to dance practice. The kids would take you to speech. Huh? The kids would take you here, 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 here. And you get all at home and you ain't got no time to go into the secret place. My God, you got to get to a place where you say, listen, you got to make up your mind. Oh, uh, one of these, we're going to pray and we're going to see what God is going to call you to be because you can't be five things uh, all in one right there. You are pulling me out of the secret place right there. I got to go into the secret place. Why? Because my destiny is in the secret place. My God. That's where my transformation comes. Uh, in the secret place. My God. Even if I brought up some superheroes. Uh, uh, before Clark Kent could become Superman. Uh, he had to go into a phone booth. Uh, and transform. Uh, and become Superman right there. Before Batman. Clark Kent could become Batman. He had a bat cave. Uh, they all knew about going to a secret place. Uh, where there is a change going on inside of their life. Uh, I come to tell somebody. Uh, the reason why you're still murmuring and complaining the reason why it's so hard to do great exploits huh? have you been in the secret place huh? if we was a time and a schedule huh? right there where would God be on that schedule huh? I know you drive and pray huh? but you got to get a time to be alone with God huh? there's a time where the kids can't be wrestling with you huh? you got to be alone with God huh? you got to get into that closet huh? because what God is going to bestow upon you for 2022 huh? it's going to take time and prayer huh? it's going to take fasting and praying huh? It's going to take laying and prostrating. It's going to take downloading and exploding huh, inside of your life right there. Someone say in a secret place. 
Now, after the secret place, it's time to come out of the secret place. If you have your Bible, just, just turn with me real quick. Uh, are you getting something tonight? Uh, let's go to Second Chronicles real quick. I just want to give you something real quick. Second Chronicles. Chapter 5. Second Chronicles chapter 5, verse 11. The Bible says, and it came to pass when the priests, someone say priests, they were coming out of the holy place. For all the priests that were present were sanctified and did not, then wait by course. In other texts, it said that my God, not only did they wait by course, but it didn't matter whose turn was it. Uh, my God, they all came right there. What you got to understand real quick before I move on to the scripture is that we are a royal priesthood. Uh, what was going on in this text was uh, Solomon was putting everything in order. Someone say order. Uh, oh, I know we don't like order sometimes. I know sometimes it's, it's okay to just be so sporadic, but how many of you know God does things in decency and in order so they started putting things in order they started going in the holies of holies and putting the things the cherubims and everything and every furniture because how many you know that my God for the glory to drop you have to have order in the place that's why even judges uh, when things get out of hand they say order in the court right there there has to be order that goes on right there because a good man steps are ordered by the Lord right there God is a God of order right there and so everything had to be placed in order and so the priests uh, when the Bible says when they came out say someone say come out uh, uh, when they came out of the holy place uh, for they all were sanctified can I talk a little bit real quickly I know uh, that, 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 that people talk about being you are acting like you're holier than thou but I know uh, that the Bible lets us know that we are to be holy I know the Bible lets us know that we are to be sanctified and set apart uh, we are to be purified by his word uh, we are needed to be set apart by the Holy Ghost uh, we can't hop between two opinions uh, there's got to be a work that God is doing and only alone huh? you can't have one foot in the world huh? and one foot in the church right there you got to be set apart someone say sanctified huh? And so verse 12 says, and also the Levites, which were the singers, all of them of Asap, of, the, of their brethren, being arrayed in white linen. You know, how many of you know that white linen represents the righteousness of God? Amen. White linen represents purity. Having cymbals and psalteries and harps uh, stood at the east end of the altar. And with them, 120 priests uh, sounding the trumpets. Uh, oh, verse 13 said, it came even to pass as the trumpets. Trumpeters and singers were as one. Someone say one. Ha. Ah. Ah, to make one sound to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord when they lifted up their voice with the trumpets and cymbals and instruments of music and praise the Lord saying for he is good for his mercy endureth forever that then the house was filled with a cloud even the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. My God. Look at verse 14. So that the priest could not stand to minister by reason of the cloud for the glory of the Lord had filled the house of God. The priest could not stand for reason of the cloud. Let me just let you know when the glory enters the temple there's no room for fleshly activity. When the glory enters the temple huh, oh it's not about what we want to do it's what God does. Huh. When the glory enters the temple huh, there is a cloud. Huh. God shows up huh, in all his might and all his power. But catch this. Huh. You gotta understand that a lot of us we want the glory of God to drop. Huh. We want miracle things that happen. Uh, some of us we want to see angel feathers fall out or whatever. Uh, we want that to happen but we don't understand the prerequisite uh, for the glory. Uh, what I started off in the verse was saying uh, that the priest came out of the holy place. Did you catch that? Uh, they came out of a secret place. Uh, they came out of a place uh, where they was alone with God. They came out of a place uh, where they did the service of the Lord. They came out of a place uh, where the public could not see the private. They came out of a place uh, where they were sanctified and when they came uh, and 
and teamed up with the Levites uh, and the singers uh, and it was all as one uh, my God uh, that's one thing important uh, the prerequisite for the anointing and the glory to drop uh, oh you gotta spend a long time uh, but when it's corporate time uh, we gotta be at one uh, you can't be like my God that brother pray too loud uh, my God that sister sings she always wanna sing lead uh, you can't have all these thoughts rustling in your mind uh, it's got to be one someone say one uh, oh we gotta be united uh, musicians and singers prophets and pastors uh, everybody's gotta be on one accord uh, oh but when we come together in one accord uh, in one place uh, lifting up a trumpet sound uh, then the Bible said uh, that the glory of the Lord uh, came into the place uh, we want the glory to come down uh, but we don't want to do the work uh, we don't want to go into the closet uh, we don't want to come out of the closet uh, but when the priest came out of the closet uh, they came out with something on them uh, when they came out of the closet uh, they were carrying the glory uh, when they came out of the closet uh, they set the standard uh, oh my God uh, it is a trying time uh, where us leaders don't pray uh, pre-leaders need to be leading prayer uh, my God uh, we need to set the example uh, of what prayer is uh, we need to set the example uh, of fasting and praying uh, we need to set the example of going into the closet uh, and coming out of the closet uh, when they came out of the prayer closet uh, my God things change uh, I got news for Revive Church uh, that in the closet uh, is the place uh, where you get renewed uh, where you get revived uh, where you get refreshed uh, but when you come out of the closet uh, don't stay in there long enough uh, because there's people that need to be saved uh, when you come out of the closet uh, there's bodies that need to be healed uh, don't worry about you catching COVID uh, the anointing destroys COVID uh, when you come out of the closet uh, people need to be transformed uh, when you come out of the closet uh, the crackhead gets delivered uh, when you come out of the closet uh, lies will be changed uh, when you come out of the closet uh, and come to church uh, you don't need no one to stir you up to praise God uh, you before the church is start uh, before they do the countdown uh, you are ready there praising God uh, before you come out of the closet uh, there will be a difference uh, in your prayer life uh, there will be a difference uh, in your preaching uh, there will be a difference uh, when you lay hands uh, you're not just giving them a massage uh, but they're feeling power that comes from the closet Someone say it's time to come out of the closet. Oh my God, it was 120 of them. And they were praising God in one accord. And I'll give you this last scripture. Go to the book of Acts real quick. Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1. Y'all still with me? Acts chapter 1. I believe God is doing a work right now. I believe there's a stirring up taking place. Oh, shut out of our side. Meet us in this place right now. Won't you do it, Lord? Meet us in this place right now. Oh, Kabasa. We're tired of just having church. Oh, shut out of our side. Meet us in this place. Thank you. Hallelujah. In verse 12, turn me down just a little bit. Then return they unto Jerusalem. These are the apostles. From the Mount called Olivet. We'll talk about that. Which is from Jerusalem, a Sabbath day journey. And when they were come in, someone say, come in. They went up into an upper room where both, both Peter and James. And John and Andrew and Philip and Thomas and Bartholomew and Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus and Simon the Zealot and Judas the brother of James. These all, someone say all, all, continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women. And Mary the mother of Jesus and with his brethren. Real quick, before we go into verse 15. Jesus already died and it was already resurrected. And this is after the ascension. And they left a place called Mount Olivet. Someone say Olivet. 
Uh, it is another name what we call Mount Olives. It is another place where on Mount Olives there was a garden called Gethsemane. Uh, and on that place with Jesus, he cried, uh, he cried and prayed, he cried and prayed. As some church tradition said, he, he, he dropped, he bled, but he sweat as great drops as blood. Uh, and an angel, he strengthened him in that place. It was a secret place uh, that he only took some of his prayer partners alone to come along with him. But they could not because uh, they were strong. They had so much agony inside of them. Huh? They were so sorrowful that they could not endure. Have you ever was so sorrowful and so faint right there that you couldn't spend time with the Lord? Have you ever been through a situation in great agony? Huh? You tried to pray. You tried to give a couple of tongues huh, out of your mouth, but the pain was so unbearable. The anguish was so bad right there that it even rocked you to sleep. Huh? So he found them sleeping. He said that you couldn't even pray with me for one hour. Mount Olive is a place. Huh? It is known for the olives that are there. And the olives, huh? my God, is the one of the ingredients uh, of how they made the anointing right there. But the anointing could not be made unless uh, the olive would crush. Uh, the anointing could not be made uh, unless it went through a crushing, uh, a pressing, uh, just to get the anointing. Uh, I come to tell somebody, uh, it's not going to come easy. Uh, my God is going to come through pressure. Uh, my God, when pressure comes upon you, uh, that's why you got to react differently. Uh, because pressure uh, will bring out praise. Uh, pressure uh, will bring out a new thing uh, inside of your life. My God. God, huh? when you have press, huh? when you pressed above measure, huh? when you pressed on all sides, huh? you need to get a hallelujah in your spirit. Huh? When things don't go your way in church huh? and you're feeling the pressure of the people right there, my God, break forth into a praise. Huh? Break forth huh? because my God, pressure will produce praise. Huh? Pressure will produce the anointing. Paul and Silas, huh? they had great pressure. Huh? They felt the whip marks on their back. Huh? They felt the chains on their feet. Huh? But they began to sing praises huh? and praise unto the Lord right there and the pressure that came upon them huh, produced an uh, anointing that was so strong huh, that it broke huh. my God every prison door open huh. pressure will break the prisons huh. pressure will break you out huh, when you respond and react huh, in a different way my God and so in this place called Mount Olivet was a place where Jesus felt pressure and he was pressed to do the will of the Father his flesh got in the way. I, I want you to take this cup away from me. I don't want to drink it right there. Abba, Father. He said this not one time, but he said it three times right here. But he said, nevertheless. In his secret place, he had a nevertheless. Have you ever went in your secret place and told God how you wanted things to happen? And walk out right there. Ah, oh, but if you stay a little bit longer. You get a nevertheless in your spirit. You say, Lord, I don't even like this person. But nevertheless, I got to pray for this person. In fact, I'm taking that person out to lunch. Uh, nevertheless, I don't even like, I don't even feel like getting up to church. But nevertheless, uh, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go unto the house of the Lord. You got to get a nevertheless inside of your spirit. Uh, my God. And so it goes down that they left that place of pressure. They left that place. Where Jesus once frequented at many times. They left that place and they went into the upper room. And as they went there, it was the 11 right there. And they were all on one accord. Huh? And the scriptures let us know, my God, that even the woman came. Mary Madeline came. And all the disciples that deceived the Lord, they came, my God. But verse 15 lets us know something intricate. It said, and in those days, uh, Peter stu uh, stood up in the midst of the disciples and said the number of the names together were about 120. Oh, my God. See, this is why I like reading the Old Testament because the Old Testament, uh, uh, my God, is the New Testament concealed. And the New Testament is the Old Testament revealed. And sometimes there's a shadow of things to come. Sometimes there's some shadows and types. And what happened uh, in the Old Testament with the old glory, my God, uh, it was 120 of them. And now, for some reason, it just so happened uh, that 120 of them came inside of this upper room. And you know the rest of the stories, Acts chapter 2. Oh, my God. God, we've seen that they came together in one accord. Oh, my God. 
And at one accord, uh, the Spirit of the Lord came in like a sound of the rushing mighty wind right there. What am I trying to say? Uh, they went into a closet, uh, but when they got up out of that secret place, uh, when Peter opened up his mouth uh, and came out of that closet, uh, they may have laughed at him uh, and thought that they were drunk, uh, but when he began to preach, uh, 3,000 souls got saved. Uh, when they even got threatened, uh, they went into a secret place, uh, and they prayed so much uh, that the house began to shake. Uh, when they came out of the closet, uh, my God, uh, they spoke the word with boldness. Uh, you got to understand uh, that there is a closet you got to come out. Uh, but when you come out, uh, there's going to be a change. Uh, when you come out, uh, there's going to be a deliverance. Uh, when you come out, uh, God is going to do something new. Uh, when you come out, uh, there will be revive. Uh, and I got news for Revive Church. Uh, it's time you walk in that name. Uh, it's time you walk in that identity. Uh, that other churches, uh, it is no coincidence uh, that many churches uh, are represented in this place. Uh, and this could be the place uh, where churches come to be revived. Uh, this can be the place uh, where people will come to be refreshed. Uh, this would be the place uh, where people will be renewed. Uh, but it takes you to go into the closet. Uh, I know going in the closet, uh, it is not a beautiful place. Uh, the closet uh, sometimes uh, looks uncomfortable. Uh, the closet uh, sometimes uh, is a place uh, where you get lonely sometimes uh, when you wonder why uh, everyone can't go with you to the closet uh, but when you come out of the closet uh, the scripture lets us know uh, that our God uh, will reward you openly uh, that our God uh, will make a difference uh, that our God uh, will bring something new inside of your life uh, but you got to go in the closet uh, before you go out of the closet. Huh? There's got to be a change going on. Huh? I hear Tasha Cobb telling me huh, that every chain must be broken. Huh? Every yoke must be destroyed. Huh? When you stay in the closet, huh? that's when you find forgiveness. Huh? When you stay in the closet, huh? that's when you get refreshed. Huh? When you stay in the closet, huh? that's when lives will be transformed. Huh? When you stay in the closet, huh? that's when yokes will be destroyed. Huh? I made up my mind huh, that I'm going to go into the closet. Huh. I'm not going to go without God's presence with me. Huh. If God's presence don't go, then I will not go. Huh. So I come to tell somebody as I close, when you're in the closet, huh, there will be the glory. Huh. When you're in the closet, huh, angels will come past you. Huh. When you're in the closet, huh, there will be a difference in your life. Huh. When you're in the closet, huh, my God, people will be set free. Huh. But when you come out of the closet, huh, your shadow will heal the sick. When you come out of the closet, huh, there'll be a boldness on you. Huh. You'll be looking for sick people. Huh. You'll be looking for people to get saved. Huh. You'll be looking for the next prayer partners. Huh. And you will spark huh, a flame. Huh. Someone tell you it's time to get out of the closet. As we close, I need some people. Those, I don't care what your title is. Those who need to be stirred up because you know what it felt like to be in the closet. And somehow, some way, it seems like life, it's not even sin, but life has got so busy. My God. And the time, the precious time you used to spend, you forfeited it. And I know God is graceful. You're not going to hell. For not spending time in the closet. Oh, but if you would have spent time in the closet. You know, he says the secrets of the Lord are revealed to those who fear him. What if the church spent time in the closet in 2019? Many of churches were not got caught off guard by the pandemic. And we're so scattered that there, that there was even one sister who was online prophesizing who said that there's a plague coming right here to America. And it went over deaf ears, my God. What has happened to us where, where we don't spend time in the closet? 
A church that doesn't have a time of prayer cannot be a church that expects miracles. Cannot it be a church that expects deliverance. Cannot be a church that will even be one because a lot of things are resolved when we pray together. Ah, oh, there's a spirit of unity that connects right here when we pray. And I know that when we get to a place in God where we get too busy to seek his face, we cannot expect what we don't put no work in. My God, we cannot expect the great miracles. Ah, you steady anybody who was a great revivalist. They'll tell you about their prayer life. I remember Benny Hinn, they said, he said, before I preach, I spent three hours praying in the Holy Ghost. Oh, my God, you may not have three hours, but a precious quality time in his presence can make the difference. I want those who need a refreshing, I want you to come up. Don't be afraid of your title. It doesn't matter. I told you I needed it. God sent me back into the closet and gave me this word in the closet. He said, tell God's people to come out of it. But before they come out of it, they got to go in the closet. You got to go into the secret place, yes. You got to go into the secret place where change begin to fall. Secret place. When lives are transformed, bodies are healed. Oh, the secret place. That's where we need to be. When change begin to fall off your life, come on, you can just worship him right where you're at right now. Oh, the secret place. That's where we need to be. The secret place. Hallelujah. That's where strongholds are pulled down. There are strongholds that are still in the mind. Saved, but still got phobias. Saved, but still superstitious. Strongholds, still afraid of what happened to you. Traumatized. Strongholds in the mind. But in the secret place, there is deliverance. All I want to do today is just activate you. That you will go to war like never before. You know, that's right. Today we just celebrate seven years of Revived Church. But it is no coincidence that today we commemorate 20 years of 9-11. And one revelation about what happened at 9-11 is they woke up the sleeping giant. Because while America slept, the enemy crept in and used their own aircraft against them. Has the enemy crept in and done a work in your own land, in your own home, in your own marriage, in your own church. But something that America did, they said, we'll never let this happen again. And they begin to tighten up their security. Anybody who gets on a plane know about that. They develop a new type of security called TSA. These people ain't no joke right here. Strip down. Let me see what you got right there. What happened is the discernment creeped up. They even put some people on a list and said, okay, we got to watch out for this person. And what am I trying to say to the church? Your discernment needs to step up because you haven't been discerning the times. That when it was a time to pray, what were you doing? When it was a time to intercede, did you go back to sleep? When it was a time to go into the secret place, you said, I'm going to turn on Netflix. What did you do? Come on. But tonight, we're going in the secret place. 
Yes, Lord. We're going in the secret place. The secret place. Yes, Lord. When lives are transformed. Sister LaDonia, can you just take that? Huh? Oh, the secret place.
We thank you, Lord. Lord God, I pray over this woman of God, Lord God. I pray that, Lord God, I know that sometimes it gets very long. But you continue to go into the secret place. You have a sound woman of God. You have a sound. Never compromise that sound. That is the sound of heaven right now. And he gives you songs of deliverance. That yokes will literally be destroyed. But in this season, when you come out of your secret place, Lies will not be the same again. And even the ones who overlooked you, who questioned the anointing, ah, in this season, they will hear about the good work that he has done inside of your life right now. Be strong and be of good courage right now. In the name of Jesus, touch right now. If it is, revive right now. Masatalaba. Revive till you never be the same again. Oh, going to make the difference. Prayer is a necessary the ingredient for the revival to take place. Bring prayer to the church. Bring it, bring it, bring it. So Heavenly Father, Lord, Father God, I just come to you right now. Oh, Lord God. I believe the assignment is finished tonight, Lord God. Lord God, so I just pray, Lord God, that everything that you have started tonight, your grace be sufficient to help them to get back in the closet, to help them stay in the closet, or to everything begins to break over their life. And when it's the right time, may they come out of the closet, May they come out of the closet. May they come out of the closet. Let that be my prayer tonight. Let it be accepted in your sight. In Jesus' mighty name. 